that's it. We're back. We're back from Microsoft Ignite. Some crazy stuff happened. Uh, one night we went to this uh, steakhouse. I guess it was supposed to be one of the best, fanciest steakhouses in the country. You know me. I don't really care about stuff. But I knew it was going to be a problem because when we sit down, the waiter says, order your drinks and then I'll come back and we'll talk about the menu. I don't need to talk about the menu. Oh, they started bringing over all kinds of weird, like there was this cone, it had some like caviar stuff in the top of it. And then the guy starts with instructions. So when you eat this, uh, hold it with your finger and, and thumb and, and it's best enjoyed in one to two bites at this angle. Are you kidding me? When I go into Burger King, you think they tell me how to eat a Whopper? I got to hold a Whopper with my thumb and finger and make sure you get a pickle in your mouth with the, get out of here, bring some steak over, I'm starving. Steve Wonder from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a look at how you can set up Microsoft Edge browser settings for your entire tenant, not just their Intune. Then he starts going on, on oh, what the Cal 8. He's telling me the Cal 8, a diet of sliced apples, of celery, something, and ginger. I'm starving. I don't give a crap what the Cal 8. Get Rubix, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so something interesting. I actually found this out at Ignite. So if I'm a little if I'm a little late to the party, I apologize. Um, you know, we talked about deploying Edge browser policies with the MAM for Windows, but one thing that exists, I'm going to show you here. If you go to admin.microsoft.com, we're going to go Show All and Settings. At the bottom here, you see Microsoft Edge. So basically, the way this this works, and uh, this falls under Microsoft. Uh, edge for business tenant policies right and you can you can click here if you do want to you know we can open this in its own uh we can open that in its own tab and we can read a little bit more about it but yeah basically there are settings you can start applying to edge if you're signed in without intune without targeting devices without targeting user groups these are just um just edge policies right so if we go back here we're going to take a look at configuration profiles. Okay, and we're going to add a profile. And we're going to call this default edge edge for business profile. Actually, you know what? That's my uh that's that's a description. I got to stop doing that. We're going to call this uh M365 edge corp. I don't know. Okay, so this is what I want to show you. When you come in here and do this, you're going to see an error because they actually have to, if, if you've never been in, in here before, they have to set up the workspace first, right? So it's like this own little piece inside of, of, um, of the admin center here. Okay, so once you give it time to settle and the profile's made, you can click on the profile and we can hit select policy. And let's take a look at what we have. So. These are suggested policies, right? There's quite a bit. And I definitely recommend looking at the documentation so you can see all the policies available to you. And you can see this is everything from application guard to contents, content settings, default search provider, you know, a lot of stuff. So let's start there. Let's actually look for default search provider. Provider enable, provider image URL, provider name, default search provider name. Okay, if you enable this policy, you set the name of the default search provider. And if you're not sure about a configuration, you can check here and look at default search provider. Uh, default search provider name. So that means we also need the default search provider search URL enabled. Default search provider. Default search provider. Uh, we need the search URL. If we look at more details, it tells us exactly what we need. So the search URL for Google would be the base URL, search, and then all these other things after it. Okay, so that's the URL that's gonna tell it to set the default for, and I don't want users to override that. So they did a pretty good job with this overall as far as selecting different things. So we'll see how this, um, oh, I already hit save there. But if we take a look, it's not just these actual settings. We can move on to extensions. So you can manage extensions, right? Um, allow these types of extensions. Extension, hosted app, theme, user script. 
Um, you can uh, you can block certain hosts, allow hosts, so you can actually limit down where folks can get their extensions from. Um, you can also select extensions right from here. So you can do external extensions. So for example, as far as add-ons go for Microsoft, those are built in. But when we want external extensions, right? Let's say I want uBlock Origin, which is my uh, ad blocker that I really like in Chrome. So I'm just gonna search for it, uBlock extension. And there it is. So what do we need here? We need the extension ID the extension ID. So if you've never done this sort of the extension, everything is up here. So the ID of the extension is gonna be the end of the URL here. The extension name is uBlock, block origin. And the description, we can pull that right from here. Uh, sure, <laughs> kinda doesn't matter as much. There we go. All right, now that we have that, sidebar apps. Yeah, so you can essentially do whatever it is that you want here. So we got that. So now with extensions, we have uBlock Origin. And when we, we grab this, right, we can say manage installation policy. We can force it. Now, if this is an edge extension, you would leave the default one. Um, but this is a Chrome one, so I'm pasting in the Chrome one. It's clients2.google.com, service update to CRX. Um, close that, we have it as force. You can manage permissions on it. Um, prevent users from using or installing the extension if it requests permissions. So you can say allow all, right? I do want to allow, because I'm familiar with this application. Okay, so in addition to extensions, you can also manage customization settings. So. For example, Copilot falls here. Basically, Copilot and all the new AI features fall here. Um, I'm gonna go down to organization branding. So you can actually brand Edge, right? And this is where you can kind of set this up for your end users, right? So you can use the default branding, which will show you this, um, whereas you have the little, they call this the profile pills. So you can see its name work, the user's initials or their picture. Um, the accent color, but we can uh, we can adjust this. So we can do custom one. So you see, we got the orange that I have to match the get Rubix. It says Rubix dev. So if I wanted to, I can import a logo. And then down here, you can see we have the Rubix logo um, as the overlay down there, right? So if they're logged in in the Rubix profile, it'll show that. So let's save these changes. Okay, so I assign this to it gets assigned to a user group because the device doesn't need to be enrolled in Intune. So I have that. So, okay, the big question is, did this work? Well, kind of. There's definitely some kind of gap between, remember in the beginning I said, when you first go in the workspace, they're like setting it up. I've been having some policy issues where like if I'm looking in the console and I refresh some stuff, sometimes I see an error. And that seems to be translating to what I'm seeing on my Windows test device. So I'll show you. So you can see we're gonna launch uh, Edge for Business and I am signed in, right? So, so far I noticed that if I go to edge profiles, uh, a policy, edge policy, um, actually says update policy, we don't really see anything here. Um, however, if I go to edge settings, my options, remember I set the account switching, those are disabled. I can't do anything here because that's because the policy is being enforced. Uh, same thing when I go down to the search settings. So if I search, for search, uh, address bar and search. So we have Google set as the default. That's from the policy. Um, yeah, see, that's the default. But if we go to manage search engines, yeah, so you can see Google is set as the default. That's the URL I put in. And you can see if I search for enhanced security down here, I can't switch that because that's a policy that's enforced. So it is here. Right um, now, the one thing that's interesting is the in private window. I'm not allowing that, but it still pops up. So yeah, the settings are pushing. Oh, and then the extensions are the other thing. Um, I don't have the forced uBlock origin extension because yeah, so we can see the important profiles are applying. It might just need more time. Eventually, this will move over to the Intune section of apps the way we have the mobile app protection policy for Windows, even though it's just the Edge browser. Clearly we have more controls here. So I believe that's gonna to move towards apps inside of Intune soon under app protection. But it's a little wonky, right? Setting it up, there was definitely some 
delay. What I'm thinking is I'm going to give it time to kind of sit and propagate itself. And then what we'll do is if anything changes, we'll check back after it's been sitting for a while and see what that policy looked like. But it's a pretty cool way to manage your org data through the browser, even on an unmanaged device. So uh, let me know if you're using this, uh, you know, what the experience has been so far, what questions you have, and we'll be seeing you.